lie for three months and never knew his name. <laughs> One summer during grad school, my roommate sublet their side of the apartment to a law student. I wasn't there the day that John, Sean, George, I don't know, and his two giant leather couches moved into our apartment. And because I was traveling a lot, we didn't officially meet until a month and a half later, when we bumped into each other in the kitchen one morning. He looked bleary-eyed and hungover and sort of stared at me across his cup of coffee as if he couldn't quite place me, which he wouldn't. We never met. <laughs> hey, he said, thanks for last night. <laughs> I said, I, I'm your roommate, Whitney, and I thought to myself, crap, this is getting really weird. I am out of here, meaning it was time to move. I have moved 28 times in my life, 28 times of packing and unpacking, 28 times of tracking down boxes and meeting new neighbors and finding the grocery store and resetting cable and purging and cleaning. I have rented, sublet, couch surfed, camped out, and even lived in not one, but two accidental communes. <laughs> you know, where you start out with one roommate and six months later find yourself living with four other people, eating family meals and composting in the backyard? <laughs> no? not counting direct family members, and I've actually gotten along with all of them, mainly because I'm pretty laid back and most dirty dishes don't bother me, and truly, I'll just leave before the heavy arguments kicked in. <laughs> I can rattle off the streets I've lived on pretty quickly. <clears throat> Aspen, Newton, Osage, Rollings, Old Quarry Lane, Great Hills Trail, Bagby, Waddle, Green Ridge, Ferndale, Tannehill, Far West, West Main, East Side, Highway 1, 2nd, 7th, 8th, 11th, 12th, 18th, 44th, 82nd, 86th Streets, and G Avenue. <laughs> that is one move every 14 months or so, and you can stop doing that math. <laughs> now, I come by this whole nomadic existence pretty honestly. I'm one of five kids, and we were all born in different states. Due to my father's job and schooling, we moved twice before I was three, and I just haven't stopped. I don't move this much because I'm a commitment phobe, because I am not. Yes, I am. <laughs> no, well, maybe. No, 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 I am not. <laughs> I have had several serious relationships in my life. In fact, I just ended a 12 and a half year relationship during my last move when Fred, my firm, died. <laughs> Rest in peace, Fred. <laughs> Rest in peace. No, it's really that I'm addicted to a notion of a fresh start. When things started to go south or wacky or out of my control in any area of my life, not just my living situation, I just pulled out my 20 Rubbermaid containers, packed up my stuff, and found a new place to live. Usually within a few days, I, I may be laid back, but I jump on things once I've made up my mind. But when things would get hectic at the office and work stress became too much to deal with, I just used move stress to take my mind off of things. And my longtime boyfriend and I broke up. I picked a different city to live in and took off. The uh, grocery store removed the sushi counter. Oh, I started thinking about other areas to live in that day. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's the smell of new shelf paper that calms me, or, or the sight of a still creased shower curtain. <laughs> but every time I move, I feel as if I can take on the world. I look at whatever I didn't like about my life and myself, and I spin it into a changed attitude. Those first few months of meeting new people and discovering new neighborhoods, I feel like the weight of everydayness and normalcy is lifted off my shoulders. So one morning, this past August, I was lying in bed with a rare bout of insomnia, and I found myself contemplating my life like, like I was some kind of indie film character. I, I'm not a worrier at all, and I usually just take life as it comes, sort of one day at a time. So I was surprised to find myself thinking about life choices. You know, like, was I content?
tent? Did I feel the walls closing in on me? How did 40 years disappear from my life? And why did I spend so much of that time watching Real Housewives instead of being one? <laughs> I realized that I had not achieved the three cornerstones of adulthood. You know, the things that they in society say make you a grown-up. The big M's, matrimony, maternity, and mortgage. <laughs> and I admitted to myself for the first time in a long while that maybe, sort of, and kind of, maybe I wanted those things. And the first two, well, they seemed as far out of reach as the bedstand on the other side of my very large, very empty bed. But the last, all this self-contemplation was enough to make a girl want to move, you know? So I resolved to change the situation immediately. Well, not immediately, it was still 3 a.m. But later that day, I called a realtor, and I was under contract to buy a house within five days. Like I said, when I make up my mind, I move pretty quickly. Everyone was shocked that I had made this commitment. My friends say that I'm going through some type of backwards midlife crisis, you know, where most people my age seek danger and change. I'm nesting and choosing paint color which, in a weird way, is danger and change for me. But where moving had always empowered me before, this move just found me very scared. Scared that I was stuck with this very expensive and very permanent choice and wondering if I had made the right decision. I stifled the urge to chuck it all and grab a suitcase and move to Europe or Miami or, or Little Rock or anywhere but here. <laughs> And I tried to focus on the positive. Hey, new neighbors, and a Mexican food restaurant within walking distance. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Brand new backyard for Houdini, my dog, to figure out how to escape from. And, and surely having stairs in my house meant I didn't have to go to the gym anymore, right? <laughs> right. I couldn't get rid of this, um, this pressure that comes with all the responsibility of owning a home. I mean, you have to not tick off the HOA and, and, and make sure that the yard is mowed. Well, first you have to plant a yard and deal with your own what kind of rodent droppings are these questions. <laughs> on and on and on. And I found myself saying, crap, this is getting really weird. I'm out of here. But some tiny, niggling doubt at probably something that was planted during that 3 a.m. come to Jesus meeting with myself stopped me. And I asked myself again, Whitney Elizabeth, I said, because sometimes you have to speak strongly to yourself. <laughs> Whitney Elizabeth, at what point do you become a grown-up? For me, it was the day that I realized moving wasn't moving, it was running. I might have had a mortgage and a car payment and a real job, but I was not a real grown-up. All those attitude adjustments I'd made over years and years of moving were surface-level choices and ones that hadn't really led to anything except the need for bigger changes and more moves. This, this idyllic Peter Pan nomadic lifestyle that I had fostered for so many years was just one giant coping mechanism. All these baby steps that I had taken to adulthood were still just baby steps, not even toddler or teen or young adult ones. And I felt pathetic and sad and kind of whiny. <laughs> so I'm opting for a new kind of fresh start now. I'm staying put until I complete at least 28 new types of moves. <laughs> I've retired my Rubbermaid containers. Goodwill. I gave up Real Housewives because, well, it's not really reality, is it? <laughs> I'm picking back up relationships and hobbies that I dropped because they'd gotten too hard to maintain. I just bought myself a new fern. Fred the second. <laughs> and I might, and please do not tell my mother, 
but I might even be looking for a new guy to move in with. Maybe even one whose name I know. 